Welcome to Medicated Housewife DIY. In today's DIY video, five DIYs you must make using Dollar Tree shower rings. Hello again, my DIY loving friends. Are you ready to elevate your spring decor game without breaking the bank? Then you must check out this video. We're talking about five insanely creative and easy DIYs that you can make using Dollar Tree plastic shower rings. Yep, you heard it right, shower rings. These little guys are gonna take your home decor to a whole new level of chic. You won't believe how easy it is to turn these humble plastic rings into high-end decor this spring. These projects are sure to impress your friends and upgrade your home. Trust me, your wallet will thank you. Plus, who doesn't love a good excuse to hit up your local Dollar Tree? Now, let's go DIY together. So stick around, let's go make some stuff and jump right into this. For this first DIY, I'm using three of those plastic shower curtain rings from Dollar Tree, and I made sure they were all snapped closed first. Plus, I'm using three different colors of this very thin yarn I got on Amazon, which I will link for you in the description box below, along with any non-Dollar Tree supplies used in this video. You can also use embroidery floss for this, but all I had was that super thin yarn, so that's what I'm using. Plus, you can make these any color you desire and as many colors as you desire, whatever makes you happy. I just used these three neutral muted spring colors. I cut three long pieces of yarn in the colors that I'm using and I'm going to hot glue them to the first shower ring. I'm going to be wrapping one of those three colors to begin with and I will simply wrap right over the two other colors that I'm not currently using because at some point I will be using each one of those three colors to wrap around the other two to finish this ring. You'll see what I mean as I go. It is a color block so all the colors will get their own assorted sized section, but having all three together as we begin wrapping just makes the transitions between the colors easier. I made a large section with the first color and then I secured the end of it with a dab of hot glue. I then move on to my next color choice and I begin wrapping that one over the other two colors as you can see me do here. Now keep in mind, I didn't have a plan or a pattern for how large each size of color would be. I am just totally winging it. <laughs> all I know is that I will use some of each of the three colors on all of the rings. When I get to the end of the first ring with my last color, I do trim off the excess on the other two colors that I am not currently using, and I just continue wrapping right over them until I get to the end of the ring and I secure the last wrap around it with some hot glue and then cut off the excess. I begin my second ring with a different one of those three colors, but we are still using all three colors to begin wrapping exactly as we did with the first ring. This time I'm starting with the lightest color and then I'm gonna move on to the darkest color and then the medium toned color. Again, I'm just making up this pattern as I go. You could also alternate colors back and forth or like make stripes or whatever pattern you wanted. All of those will work with this method as well. So just go crazy. I made the third ring the same way as the first two, just all with different amounts of each of those three colors so that they are different but totally coordinated. Then I made literally the most basic tassels for each of my three rings, one tassel in each of the three colors, and the way I did it was to wrap a bunch of the yarn around my hand into a large loop, and then I cut that loop open, and using those tiny little hair elastics from Dollar Tree, I wrapped an elastic around the middle of that cut open loop of yarn, then wrap that directly over the ring and secure it over the ring with another tiny little elastic, as you can see me do here, Easy peasy, who has time for fancy tassels anyway? Plus the elastics are clear, so they're not super noticeable anyway. All you see is the yarn color. I'm okay with it. Are you okay with it? <laughs> And these are my set of three color block tassel napkin rings. These are so easy to do for any occasion. You can mix up the colors. I am thinking of making some using navy and white stripes for a nautical theme. The possibilities are endless here. Simple but stylish. 
This next DIY is using 11 of the shower rings total and that is less than one pack and take note guys, these packs of clear rings are actually two different sizes although they have the exact same packaging which are significantly smaller. One is smaller than the other which you will see in a later project in this video so be aware um, when you use the multiple packs for a project and please also disregard my injured th thumbs. Uh, it was a craft related injury which you will also hear about later in the video. Beside the 11 rings, I'm also using this small plastic condiment cup that come in a pack from Dollar Tree. So I am using some hot glue to attach six of the rings directly on top of one another on top of the condiment cup. They do fit perfectly on the top of that cup. Then I glue three more rings to each other, one right on top of another. Then I glue a set of two rings together for a total of 11 rings used. I'm gonna paint the three sets of rings that I just glued together. So I mix the Apple Barrel Matte White Acrylic Paint, which I will link for you below. I mixed it with some Plaster of Paris, which I had in my craft stash, but I will also link that below. I wanted all that clear plastic to really have an opaque, rough texture to it. and. This just seemed like the easiest way to achieve that. Although you could probably get away with mixing the paint with some baking soda to achieve this look as well. And I fully covered all three pieces on the outside only, I'm not worried about the inside. And then once they dried, I did go back and I gave all three pieces a second coat of the Plaster of Paris mixed with paint. While the paint dried, I had grabbed some wood beads in two different sizes, larger and smaller, enough to fit around the diameter of the plastic rings, plus some extras because, you know, I'm all about those extras. I put the beads on some floral wire, wire just to keep them together, and I am dipping them in a mixture of folk art antique wax, which I will link for you below, mixed with plain water, and then just wiping off the excess with a dry paper towel. You can find wood beads at Dollar Tree, but I will also link some for you below. I threw in four additional of those large beads though, because I wanted to use them as feet. I'm using some folk art acrylic paint in the color Camel, which I will link for you below, and a rough dry brush to distress the very stark white plaster pieces that I had painted. And in retrospect, I should have mixed the plaster with more of a beigey color paint because the white was very bright and I needed to really tone it down. So I am using a dry brush to sort of roughly get some of that camel color on those three pieces and really start to dirty them up a little bit and give them a little bit of character. Still feeling like they needed more character and distressing, I grabbed some antique wax, this time straight up wax with no water. And first I used a tiny brush to brush and rub the wax into all of the grooves in all three pieces so that it looked like they had been sitting around for years outside and accumulated lots of wear and tear. That's the look I'm going for. Then after I painted all of the little grooves and notches, I went back in with some antique wax and a larger dry brush and I roughly painted over that camel color and all of that remaining white that was there, just getting as much distressing on there as I could. Starting with the smaller of the wood beads, I am using hot glue to glue the beads along the edge of that six ring and condiment cup set that I had. And I glued the beads with the whole side facing up. And I also made sure not to cover up the space where that latch part of the key of the uh, ring where it closes is because I had something else in mind for that area. So I left that space where the little latch is clear. After the beads are glued down, I took the three ring set that I had and I glued that right on top of all of the beads. Next, I glued the larger beads all around the top edge of that. Also, leaving the space where that ring closure is, I left that empty. Then taking my two ring set, I glued that directly on top of the larger beads. 
I have this roll of paper raffia I got on Amazon and I will link it for you below. I like to unravel it because there's a nice crinkly texture and I slid one end of the raffia into the bottom hole where that bottom ring was, secured it with some hot glue, and then used some dabs of hot glue going up all of the rings to kind of squeeze that raffia into the space where all those ring latches lined up. Then I trimmed the end and I tucked it inside the top, securing it with some more hot glue at the very top. I needed some way of finishing the top of this vase, so I grabbed some more of that unraveled raffia and I braided it into a long piece um, that was long enough to cover the top ring. Then I secured that braid when I was finished around the diameter of the very top ring to kind of just finish it off and give it a finished look on top because that top was pretty, pretty unsightly, I think. Lastly, I turned the vase over and I used four of the larger size beads glued to the bottom of the condiment cup as feet for the vase and to give it a little bit of height. And this is my beaded ring vase. This was a surprise for me. I didn't think I'd like it at all, but I think it's really unique and very cool looking. It's not really rustic, maybe a little boho. I am not sure it looks like wood, but it does look aged and pretty chic in my opinion, something different. This next DIY is using, wait for it, more plastic shower curtain rings. Come on, you guys, it's a theme. I start with hot gluing two rings together at the latch, followed by a third ring in between those two, and then a fourth ring on the other side. And then a fifth ring that we're gonna go, it's gonna go right in between two of the other rings. And I think you can figure out from here that there's the sixth, seventh, and eighth rings they will all go in between the remaining rings that are there for a total of eight rings that are kind of shaped like a flower. And then there is a ninth ring that will be the base and that goes on the bottom and I'm going to hot glue these eight rings right on top of it. So technically we are using nine rings so far. I'm using my enormous stash of acrylic gems, but I will find something like them to link for you below. I am going to start by attaching the gems all around the middle of the rings to cover up that huge glob of hot glue that is holding this whole thing together. I go around in a circle until that whole middle is covered in gems. Then I start applying gems to the outside rings in the middle of each of them, still going around in a circle, sort of like an assembly line style. Followed by more gems under the middle ones, and I'm going to keep following this method until each of the outsides of my rings are pretty much covered up with the gems. I did separate a small batch of the smaller sized gems out of the bunch and I used those to fill in all those empty spaces where a larger gem won't fit and where there are gaps that you can clearly see those plastic rings underneath. I alternate between large and small gems wherever I see a hole or a gap that needs to be filled up. And then I start to build up the top with gems because I will be placing something on top and I want the base to be a little higher up. So I'm gonna use more gems to build that up. I take one more ring and for those of you keeping track at home, that makes a grand total of 10 rings used. I take the ring and I start attaching some small and some large gems to it until you can't see the plastic ring at all and I need to leave enough space on the inside for a small pillar candle to fit inside because these rings on their own are too big for a small pillar candle but too small for a larger pillar. So I'm just gonna build up that ring to fit the candle snugly. And then I just glue that gem encrusted ring to the very top of the rest of my rings and it is ready for a candle. And this is my crystal in quotations, candelabra. And that's not a gold stand. I just have it resting on something for display purposes. I am loving the sparkle on this, you guys. I put some fairy lights on the bottom so you can see more of that sparkle, but this reminds me so much of a fancy chandelier, only it's sized for a candle and made out of $1.25 plastic rings. Talk about bougie on a budget, so glam. This next DIY uses 45 plastic rings. Yeah, that's right, 45. That's almost four packs. Plus we are using a Dollar Tree mop head that I disassembled into individual strands. 
This is super simple, but kind of time consuming. So binge watch some Netflix while you do this part. I am going to wrap all 45 rings with mop head pieces. Usually it takes two pieces of the mop rope to fill up each ring. I use hot glue to secure the beginnings and the ends. And like I said, time consuming, but super easy. Also, let me note that this is the project that injured my thumbs, like I showed you earlier in the video. For some reason, the fibers in this rope or the friction or something just totally split the little corners of my thumbnail beds. Is that weird? Let me know in the comments if any of you have experienced something like that, working with massive amounts of rope or string. It was so painful. Anyway, I also wanted to point out that I did not know at this point that the shower rings came in different sizes. So on this project in particular, that became an issue later, but I worked it out. So back to wrapping 45 rings with mop string. Now all 45 rings are wrapped and I'm going to start by attaching three rings together in sets. And I'm going to use zip ties from Dollar Tree to attach them because we're going to cover up the zip ties later on. I attach three together in a row and then I'm going to attach another three together in a row and then another three together in a row and then we're attaching the three rows of three to each other so we're going to end up with a wall made up of nine rings that is three by three i tighten all the ties and i trim all the ends off of the zip ties and then repeat that whole process four more times so we're going to end up with a total of five walls made up of nine rings that are stacked three by three all attached together now i've got my five walls of rings and my injured thumbs and I have this self-adhesive faux leather from Amazon, which I will link below for you, but you could also use the faux leather from Dollar Tree that I personally can never find at my Dollar Tree, but maybe you can. If you use Dollar Tree leather, you will have to use a glue or an adhesive to attach your leather pieces. This stuff that I have is self-adhesive, so I don't have to worry about that. I marked the back of the leather into three inch long strips that are a half an inch wide, and I will need a total of 84 of those three inch strips. So remember that 84. So I cut the leather into the strips that I marked. I'm using these three inch strips to cover up all of the areas where I have zip ties. So at every connection of the rings, every place where they connect to each other, will be a piece of leather covering that connection so you won't see the zip ties. I start by covering all the zip ties on the five walls of rings as you can see me doing here. With my walls covered in the leather, I am going to start by attaching two walls together at the edges and we're going to be using more zip ties to do this. Then I attach another two walls together the same way at the edges and using zip ties. Then I attach the two sets of the two walls together the exact same way using more zip ties. Now I don't know if you can notice but the bottom of this box we are making is significantly smaller than the four walls that are surrounding it and that is because that wall was made using those smaller shower rings that Dollar Tree sells along with the larger ones in the exact same package like the same SKU number and everything. Don't they realize they have crafters buying these things? Really I should write a strongly worded email like they care like they would really care what I think but anyway I'm still going to attach the bottom to the walls the same way we attached the walls together using zip ties and attaching the rings together at the edge of both sides then I tighten and I trim all the zip ties that are holding the box together and lastly we're going to cover all those zip tie connections with the remaining three inch strips of the faux leather and this is my mop head and leather square basket. Now the concept of the basket made out of shower rings is not new. I've seen it a hundred times wrapped in jute, but I think the fact that this one is a light colored rope made out of mops and brown leather connections really elevates the look of the square basket and brings it to a whole new level. Perfect for holding hand towels in a guest bathroom or a small throw blanket in a living room. 
This last DIY, we're using some more of that paper raffia we used before and a total of six plastic shower curtain rings. And first I unraveled a bunch of that raffia and then I begin to wrap each shower ring individually with the raffia and I'm going to wrap them until they are fully wrapped in the raffia and no more of that clear plastic can be seen on them. Then I take three of the raffia wrapped rings and I'm going to glue them together, one on top of each other. And this is going to leave me with two sets of three rings. I take more of the unraveled raffia and I glue a piece along the two inner ribs, rims on each of the three ring sets, as you can see me do here. Now, honestly, I already love the way these look on their own as napkin rings, but to give them some spring zest, I grabbed a piece of this leafy jute I have in my stash. I will link it for you below, and I tie a crude knot around them and stick a cute little white flower from Dollar Tree down under the jute. This is my pair of springtime raffia napkin rings. I really like the way this raffia works as a napkin ring. I love it with the flowers, but even without them, just on its own, I'm seriously thinking about making a set for my dining room. So neutral, so high end. But as usual, I want to know what you think. Let me know in the comments which one of these Dollar Tree shower ring DIYs is your favorite and why. I really love hearing from you. I want to thank you all for watching. Your support means so much to me, and I am thankful every day for each and every one of you. And if you've enjoyed any of these Dollar Tree spring home decor DIYs, please consider hitting the like button and subscribing. I would love to have you here. Until next time, thanks for watching. My name is Sarah. I'm the medicated housewife, and crafting is my medication.